We're getting towards the end of the soybean spray season, and unfortunately, people are starting to run out of Roundup across the country. What's going on? <laughs> well, you know what? That might not be an all bad thing because Roundup has gone way up in price this year, and some of the alternative products that you may be tank mixing with Roundup or even using in place of Roundup really haven't gone up that much in price, comparatively speaking. So instead of just spraying a straight shot of Roundup mixed with some more Roundup to get some of those tough weeds, you may consider using a tank mix partner as a cheaper and better option. Okay, we're gonna talk a little about Roundup Tank Mix Partners in soybeans, but before we get to that, I just wanted to say, if you look at next year, most likely the price of Roundup is going to be up again. Realistically, you could be spending $10 an acre just for a quart to four pound glyphosate next year. It's, I mean, it's crazy. It's three, four times what it was just a year ago. So that being said, you have to look at these other things, the ways to get better weed control with maybe spending a little less money. The best way in soybeans is to put a pre-emerge herbicide out. We want you to start with a good foundation, start with a good pre-emerge herbicide, then it makes the job post-emerge a lot easier. If let's say it's right now and you haven't sprayed your beans at all yet with anything, chances are you've got an awful lot of weeds out there. Now Roundup is a great herbicide. Even today with all the weeds that are resistant or building tolerance to Roundup, it's still great because it's excellent on most grasses and it's got pretty good activity in a lot of broadleaves. But the broadleaf portion is where it really struggles. So let's talk about the broadleaf tank mix partners you could add to Roundup to make your herbicide a little better. Well, if you're wondering, wow, I don't know much about these tank mix partners, guess what? Just remember back a few years to the conventional soybean days and think about what we were doing. Yeah, we were basically, saying, oh, we'd, we'd put a little of this in to control this weed and this weed and this weed. Well, just think about it that way. When you're going out in your fields now with Roundup, there are a few weeds that Roundup is a little bit weak on. And when you've got a lamb's quarter issue or you have a velvet leaf issue or a water hemp issue or, or morning glory or whatever the weed may be, just pick that product that we used to use in the conventional days to control that particular weed. Yeah, in other words, if you don't know what to do, just ask your dad because I'm sure he knows <laughs> all those same products he was using 15 years ago, they're all still there and they're actually cheaper than they were 15 years ago. Take Pursuit, for example. You used to spend $20 an acre for Pursuit. Now you can get a full rate for probably $12 to $14 an acre, something like that. And all you have to do is throw in a half rate of Pursuit and you'll have good activity on wild buckwheat, on black nightshade. It'll even help you on things like lamb's quarters, cockle sunflower, velvet leaf. There's a big list of weeds that Pursuit has activity on, plus it has residual. Now granted, if you're going to use Pursuit as a tank mix partner, you gotta be careful what you rotate to. About the only things you can really rotate to after using a half rate of Pursuit are wheat, corn, and soybeans, the major crops. Now there are a few others you could rotate to, but you have to avoid rotating to things like sunflowers and sugar beets, maybe even avoid it for a few years. But if you're just in a corn, soybean, wheat rotation, a half rate of pursuit is a great thing. It's something we use even on our farm because we get a lot of problem with wild buckwheat and a few other weeds that pursuit is excellent on. Okay, let's take a couple of tough weeds, yellow nut sedge and Venus mallow. For some guys, they say, well, I've got a pocket of yellow nut sedge out there. One of the best things you can do is use bassagran. Add a quart of bassagran plus a quart of oil. You can do a really good job on yellow nut sedge, burning off the top growth and holding it back, allowing your I crop to get ahead. I tank mix partner section. Now, if you're going to tank mix <laughs> some bassagran in there, that's fine too. One of the weeds that it's really strong on is Venus mallow. At a half rate of bassagran, tank mixed in with a quart of Roundup, you do a great job on Venus mallow and some of the other weeds in your field. Well, coming back to that yellow nut sedge problem that we talked about, it's the same thing as when we talk about cattails. We have to have a very low amount of water because things like cattails and nut sedge, they have very waxy leaves, so they don't hold a lot of chemical. And in order to kill them, you have to get a very high concentration. So instead of the normal using 10 gallons of water with your quart of Roundup, maybe you wanna flip it around and use about 10 gallons of Roundup with a quart of water. No, I'm just kidding. But but seriously, I'd, where we're I'd, going I'd, I'd cut that water rate way back, and instead of using 10 gallons per acre, I'd probably use three gallons of water per acre and up the Roundup rate. You just want a very concentrated spray. We've got a number of different weeds out there. We're using some classic to, to add as a tank mix partner for help on morning glory. We're using some first rate as a tank mix partner to help on common ragweed and even some big cockleburs and sunflowers. Rather than 
increasing that roundup rate from one quart to two. Last year it cost us about another $3 an acre to do that. This year it may cost $9 an acre to do that. So now it's much more cost effective to go with that first quart of Roundup and then add the first rate in for six bucks. Hey, that's that's the way to go. Well, plus the fact that you might not even be able to find Roundup anymore at your dealer. A lot of dealers are getting completely sold out for right now on glyphosate. I thought you were gonna so, say because common ragweed's becoming resistant to Roundup <laughs> like it has in parts of South Dakota. Yep, another weed that we've got for an issue is velvet leaf, but you can add resource very inexpensively to Roundup, it really helps the Roundup out. Just keep in mind though, with any of these tank mix partners, you're probably gonna see some slight leaf response, like with Resource and with Flexstar, products like that, you might see a little speckling on the leaves. It's gonna go away soon, so don't get all concerned about it, but it is something to make you aware of if all you've sprayed is Roundup on your farm for the last 10 years. Well, one last weed to mention, since we are in a corn on cornfield, is volunteer corn. If you've got volunteer Roundup Ready corn, or if your neighbors have been planting Roundup Ready corn, chances are some of the volunteer corn out in your field, or maybe all of it, will be Roundup resistant. So don't forget to throw something in to wipe out that very tough weed, volunteer corn, something like Select Max, Assure, there's a number of different products that do a decent job controlling volunteer corn. Well, once again, if Roundup is getting too expensive for you or it's not very available, there's many different products you can mix with Roundup to make your weed performance even better. So at least consider those for this year and certainly for next year as we continue to see the Roundup price go up. Well, one of the weeds that we didn't address in this segment was our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to get this tough weed under control coming up next. <music> 